welcome to another edition of Trader Talk TV. Today we've got Jay Stevens in the office. Jay, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Kieran. Jay is the GM uh, for Rubicom International, and he's in here today, today to talk about um, the XAPI product. What is that? And Jay is going to describe how it works with a um, number of ad servers globally. So Jay, you've launched this product, um, XAPI. Yeah. Um, just curious how it works and how you're working with um, the ad servers globally with this product. Sure. I guess the best way to kind of frame up what XAPI is, is that really, you know, to go back to an old commercial that BASF does, uh, our job is not to make the ad server, our job is to make the ad server smarter. Mm. Uh, and really the concept is how do we integrate uh, a, a, a well-lit premium marketplace and an exchange more closely in with an ad server in order to maximize the revenue uh, for a particular publisher or an app developer uh, or any media owner which uh, is currently using an ad server uh, to traffic their campaigns. Yeah. So, so let's just draw this out. Let's yeah, talk sure. about the ad server and this, this sort of layer you've, you've built, this XAPI, because it sounds like you're trying to become uh, you know, a, a clever sort of way for the ad server to make smarter decisions in terms of monetization. Exactly. Indeed. So if you look at the way a, a typical inventory stack is always a, a kind of a pyramid, if you will, uh, with direct sales sitting at the top and always having the kind of the prioritization within the ad server. Um, and usually this is done in some kind of waterfall mechanic, right, where it's uh, priority one, two, three, depending on what kind of share of yeah. voice or what kind of prioritization that it has. And then typically what we've seen by most publishers uh, and media owners is this concept of anything that doesn't sell directly drops down into a non-guaranteed inventory pool where both performance campaigns, RTB, ad networks, and, uh, and house all compete side by side, impression by impression. Now the challenge with this is that as private marketplaces have become much more popular as the actually the CPMs from private marketplaces have become uh, much more buoyant. What it means is that there are actually instances here where uh, RTB yield on an impression by impression basis should trump and should uh, essentially take an impression that was scheduled to go to a guaranteed mm -hmm. uh, buyer, but but yet take that impression from that user uh, and the idea is then to repaste that that uh, that campaign out and allow that non-guaranteed buy to to trump it to take prioritization over the guaranteed buys. So is it kind of like a holistic yield management? That's exactly what it is. Holistic right. yield management uh, in a, in a, essentially what equates to a unified auction. And there have been a number of ways in which people have tried to do this in the past. One of which is to place a tag at the very top, yeah, uh, and then do a pass back, which goes back into the the essentially the guaranteed pot. But what you're looking at here is a fill rate of you know very small single digit percentages based upon what the density of demand looks like in any particular market. Netherlands, UK, obviously France being extremely high, rest of markets around the world being you know not so uh, mm -hmm. not so buoyant. And it's a way essentially just to kind of uh, as a, as a small quick fix. But then you know if that impression is not taken, then it drops down into to the non guaranteed pot down here. So really the idea behind XAPI was, you know, we, we essentially built this with the concept uh, and under the construct of working very closely with our partnership within Mobi. Mm. Uh, so obviously Mobi has, you know, their own technology, their own sales team that's going and selling this piece of the equation, but they needed an exchange element to be able to plug in directly into, uh, into their own mobile ad server. And so we, we really constructed uh, XAPI with this in mind, with the idea being that, hey, we can integrate much more closely with the ad server and, and, and really be able to, uh, to make smarter decisioning capabilities around that. Um, because, you know, if you look at kind of the way it traditionally works uh, in terms of, you know, in the non-guaranteed pot, you've got private marketplaces sitting up here and open auctions sitting up down here, mm -hmm. right? And so the, the concept and, and the construct here was, Let's break down this wall here between what has historically been what's prioritized mm -hmm. direct and allow non-direct opportunities to compete against direct, direct sold campaigns. So effectively you're doing uh, similar to what Google's been doing on the DFP side with dynamic allocation. You're Absolutely. Sort of working with um, you know, ad server technology to have them do similar, similar service. That's exactly right. So essentially the concept is, is, uh, is we allow other third-party ad servers to have the same functionality 
uh, and that same kind of capability as as Google brings with with Google and uh, with DFP and AdX yeah. working closely in conjunction, we're now able to do this essentially with every other ad server yeah. that exists. So I mean, it's a you're saying that it's an open sort of uh, process. You're, you know, this is you go into some some of your some of your uh, partners like in, in South America or, yes. or globally, and so we can plug in and we can do this sort of smarter optimization. Effect. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the interesting thing about it is if you look at what the footprint of of uh, of DFP around the world, yeah. it's obviously they, they enjoy a very strong and I would say hegemonic position mm -hmm. in places like the US and the UK and Australia. Yeah. Uh, but once you begin to get outside of the English speaking realm, uh, Latin America, for instance, being a, a great case in point, uh, and many of the Southern European and, and, uh, and, and Germany and other Northern European, the Scandies, for instance, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, DFP doesn't have that kind of footprint, that kind of footprint, yeah, yeah. and so there are local ad servers in all of these markets, uh, which have a great publisher base, and many of which are actually publishers that we already work with collectively. I mean, it, it, there's one good example in the in, in South America that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. E-planning, who have a massive, massive footprint across uh, across uh, South America. Yeah, I mean, we're talking somewhere around the neighborhood of about 250 premium publishers uh, throughout all of the uh, the major Latin American countries. Um, and they were essentially were our first major partnership uh, with XAPI outside of uh, outside the U.S. and outside of mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen amazing initial success from that. Uh, and they are right now they have lit up. I think it's somewhere around 45 of their 250 premium publishers in the region that are using XAPI today. And it's a very um, unique market, obviously. It is. Uh, so, yeah. so what value would this add to something like that? I mean, obviously, like you know, the, the South American market is very, very different as as the other markets from the US right. and and the UK and, and Australia, where you know, Google are very strong. So, what kind of value this has add to something like ePlanning, who have all these publishers? I mean, in in terms of sort of how they've sort of monetize the sites. Yeah, well, I mean, ultimately, if you look at at, uh, at many of these markets, let's let's take Brazil out of this yeah. equation. Brazil yeah. is a $3 billion online ad market. Yeah. Um, it's very buoyant in its own right and, and, and continuing to grow at a pretty voracious clip. Um, but if you then look at all the other markets throughout Latin America, uh, the next largest is is uh, is Mexico at just mm -hmm. shy of a billion dollars in terms of overall digital spend, and then it begins to fall accordingly. You know, Argentina next, and mm -hmm. then the rest of uh, the rest of LATAM. The point here is that what we are doing essentially is enabling automation to take place in these markets. These are the first green shoots of automation uh, in much smaller territories. Now, the reason why this is important is because if you look at average order value, if you look at the fixed costs of selling, planning, mm -hmm. buying, booking, trafficking, billing, collecting on that, it becomes prohibitively expensive mm. to buy display in yeah. many of these territories where it's just too expensive to do all of those 42 steps and 12 pairs of hands that touch any campaign, right? So if we can provide that level of automation to that and enable e-planning to uh, essentially offer this as a native solution into their own platform, now all of a sudden you create the opportunity for scale to emerge, and for that you, to grow. Do you think that would bring new spend into these markets? I mean, obviously glo Absolutely. global global demand are looking to buy in different different markets, and so you're opening up programmatic to these these, these smaller markets effectively. Yeah, I mean it's not just it's not just uh, not just global demand, but it is big, you know, big fast moving consumer goods, yeah. people like Coca Cola and yeah. Nestle and Danon and uh, you know, as, especially as these markets become uh, you know, the middle class in these territories begins to grow and those people are spending more and more time on, online, therefore more money flows into that equation. However, if it's not big enough, if the average order value and the audience size is too small, display is handcuffed and yeah. handicapped and yeah, yeah. it really needs automation in order to allow it to grow. Mm. And this is not just unique only to the, uh, to, to the Latin markets. Every market really outside of the big five in Europe Really has challenges with this, yeah. right? So if I'm in Belgium and and uh, you know which is a you know a little over half a billion dollar market, how is the average order value? How do I justify as a marketer spending you know X percent, a huge enormous percentage of my media plan to go against uh, to go against display uh, when I can just I should use other automation systems? Um, and so as a result, what happens is is that the monies tend to flow where there's least resistance, mm. and that's to Google and to Facebook. And so that means all the traditional major media owners 
are losing uh, out, are right. Losing out yeah. right? They're watching their, their, their print revenues Ooh. decline. Digital is not making up the delta. Therefore, they need to be able to add levels of automation in order to make their businesses more efficient. And this is exactly what this does. So it's effectively an enabler for a lot of these smaller guys who want to kind of to access this programmatic budget. Absolutely. So if you look at um, if you look at uh, Belgium, for instance, uh, there's a you know there's there's Adhes, which is probably the the leading ad server and definitely the the dominant ad server in the Belgian market. Uh, in the Nordics, it's CSense and and Mediate. Uh, Germany is relatively fragmented with, you know, addition, ad tech and, and smart as well as DFP. Uh, so there's a number of players there. Same in France where it's kind of, you know, a, a fragmentation of OAS and yeah. uh, smart and, um, and a little bit of DFP. Yeah. And so, you know, the challenge is, is that all of these various ad servers, um, you know, are you know, having to compete against DFP with this strong combination of, of you know, ad server plus exchange combined together. And that's essentially exactly what we want to do here. And we want to enable both all the secondary ad servers in the in the marketplaces uh, around the world, as well as those publishers who have their own operated ad servers. Yeah. You know, people like Leonardo and and um, uh, and Lagadere, both of which you know use their own proprietary. So a lot of big media companies in these spaces uh, or these countries actually build their own tech, effectively. Their Absolutely, ad yeah, yeah. And Germany particularly as well. Germany has a long tradition of this, and this is obviously the reason why ad tech was acquired by AOL yeah. is because ad tech in Europe was, or AOL in Europe was using ad tech as their mm -hmm. ad server, and then when the roll up started to happen in what two thousand nine yeah. or so, um, that's where we saw you know AOL buy ad tech because they wanted to bring that technology. Uh, in house and in terms of the channels, I mean, you, you talked about it, Moby, but like you yeah. obviously roll this into display. But is mobile a big part of it as well? Mobile is definitely a big part of it. I mean, we I think we have uh, two or three other partners that that we are right now uh, executing a similar integration with. Um, but this is a you know it's a fascinating uh, yeah. new capability and, and offering, and that it allows entire markets that have historically had challenges. Uh, with this and have historically had this very solid line mm. uh, between direct and non-direct um, and non-guaranteed and guaranteed beginning to, uh, to to be able to take advantage of, of, of more sophisticated capabilities. Uh, is it mobile web specifically or are we talking in app as well? Or Both, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, what's the plans to roll it out? It's, it's obviously been sort of tested at the minute or you've kind of rolled it out globally or what's what's the sort of, sort of uh, time scales? Yeah, so um, right now the way it is is uh, we have uh, e-planning uh, in Mobi um, are already both on a, on a desktop and mobile environment actively using this um, and using it for, for the publishers that we collectively work together. Um, and we have a number, I think probably about another dozen uh, behind them uh, that are currently integrating with uh, with the Exchange API. So oh. it's really exciting times uh, mm -hmm. in that you know really gives uh, many of the other ad servers around the world the same you know very similar Capabilities. capabilities. Yeah, and obviously make it a bit competitive as well. Yeah, markets. indeed. Jay, thanks for that walkthrough XP API. We're looking forward to the rollout. So uh, thanks very much, and we'll see you next week for Trade Talk TV. Yeah, thanks, Kieran. Appreciate it.